Hey guys, this is Josh from Grappazilla, and today we're going to talk about the U.S. Uh, freestyle Olympic team's performance at the 2024 Paris uh, Olympics. A lot of people are talking about it because it's the first time in 56 years that the U.S. didn't take um, a gold medal within freestyle wrestling. By the way, if you see me doing ticks, I got Tourette syndrome, so can't help it, okay? So let's go. Um, I'm going to read a lot because I have a lot of uh, um, thoughts that I put down. And uh, listen, in the comments, let me know what you think. You might not like some, you might do, but these are my thoughts. And hey, let's get the discussion rolling. So first of all, the U.S. still got uh, two bronze medals and a silver. Okay, let's talk about that. And and overall, I think I was very happy with their performance. I, th I think when they wrestled, they wrestled very well. But there were some elements within um, that specific tournament that have to be looked at and discussed. I think the first element is that nowadays, most of the brackets, even though Russia wasn't part of the Olympics this year, um, a lot of the brackets were stacked with Russians, Dagestanis, Ossessions, uh, etc. And uh, with for wrestling for other countries. So no matter what, you probably have to wrestle a top level wrestler somewhere, somehow. Okay. Um, now that said, if we don't look at Team USA, but American wrestlers as well, the American wrestlers also did this. You had uh, Austin Gomez who wrestled from Mexico. He uh, he was in 65 kilograms, but he had a, a really tough first draw against of all guys Haji Aliyev, who possibly is the best Azeri wrestler of all time. You had uh, Miles Amin, um, who represented uh, San Marino. Uh, actually, I was really impressed by Miles Amin as a uh, uh, performance I think I thought he wrestled amazingly and uh well done Miles you know um and you have Sebastian Rivera who wrestled for Puerto Rico um I was also really impressed by Sebastian Rivera's uh performance especially in the bronze medal match uh because the the man the last couple minutes of that match were amazing I think it was against a Mongolian so just to let you know it's not just the Russians who are, who are going to other countries where they hold citizenship also Americans are starting to do they got they caught on to wind on this and and we'll probably see more and more of this unless uh UWW um you know World Wrestling does something about it but I, I don't think they will and I don't think they should um in the end the U.S. did well you know I think Overall, the, the women team, women's team did well, you know. Um, the Greco team, not so good, but also historically, it's hit and miss. Uh, U.S. isn't the strongest in Greco, but uh, I think most guys in the wrestling world know this. It doesn't mean that U.S. doesn't have great Greco wrestlers. In the past, they haven't. It's just it's a, it's a tougher, uh, tougher ballpark for the U.S. there, okay? Um, now... I want to tell you something. There was a, a friend of mine I was talking to on Instagram named Morgan Flaherty. Uh, he's from Mogo Training. Very smart guy. Amazing wrestler. Uh, he's very good at physical conditioning for wrestling. I think he's in China right now training the Chinese national team. Um, and he said um, that, because I said maybe because of the release of the Russian national team, it was easier. He said something interesting. He said probably it wasn't. Because the the most of these national teams were preparing so much to deal with the Russians like Sidulayev, Sidakov, etc., that when Russia wasn't allowed, all their tactics and strategies might have gotten um, uh, confused and uh, switched up. So that might have had a play. Um, but I think in order to talk about this, we need to go about the specific American wrestlers. So at 57 kilograms, let's start. We got Spencer Lee. Uh, he was outstanding. Like, no one can say something bad about Lee. Okay, he didn't take the gold, but he could have, you know? And I believe he's going to continue to be a nightmare internationally. Um, the guy's a stud, you know? Uh, it was just a case of Rei Higuchi's uh, speed and uh, smoothness and attack being the winning formula in this specific match, okay? Um... Now, Zane Rutherford at 65 kilograms. So it was a bit tough to watch Zane go out in the, the first round. Um, it was a case of first and foremost, uh, the 65 kilogram division was absolutely stacked. And he pretty much pulled the worst opponent, okay, uh, stylistically for him, which was uh, Rahman Amuzad of uh, Iran. Now, Amuzad negated and can negate all of Zane's pressure. Um, and also, I think if Zayn would have won against Amozad, he would have a tough draw because uh, Dudayev would be next, who's an amazing wrestler, and Musakayev. And had he beaten those two, which he could have, 
let's let's be honest, Zane Rutherford is a stud. Uh, he would have to go against um, Kiuka, who took uh, who's also a stud. So I think it was a very tough draw. Could Rutherford have gone the all the way? Yes, definitely. I have no doubt. As had he gotten a first round draw uh, that was different, I believe he would have gone at least to a medal round and bronze, probably bronze, silver, maybe even gold. I mean, he's very talented, man. And it just wasn't his day. Maybe biorhythm. You never know. It's wrestling and uh, wrestling has a lot of surprises. Okay. 74 kilogram uh, weight division, Kyle Dake. Now, 74 kilogram, in my opinion, historically is the division. I think that's the where you've seen the most talented wrestlers of all time be there. Like if you look at the top, let's say 50 wrestlers, you're going to see a lot of them technically, if you look at technically are in the 74 kilogram, it's where speed and power starts to really mix at that uh, perfect uh, meeting point. Okay. I might be wrong. You might be have another uh, point of view, but Hey, that's what I think. Now this one was surprising because I think uh, Dake, my personal opinion had the strongest chance of getting uh, to the final round and even taking gold. Um, the only issue was a Japanese wrestler named Daichi Takatani, okay, who I must say is absolutely amazing. And I mean, amazing wrestler. The guy is good. Okay, maybe if you don't know him, doesn't mean he's not good. A lot of people say, oh, I never heard of him. Doesn't mean he's not good. He's good. Let's get that fact. Uh, in the match against uh, Dake and um, Takatani, the uh, score was more like an NFL football game. Wow, that was a crazy match, okay? And I believe Dake probably lost the mental edge. Um, there was a call that was being argued. And from what I understood, I was a bit confused in it. Uh, Dake was more, he got more emotionally involved with that call. And when you do that, uh, and I do think probably Dake was right had that been there. I think he's that type of guy. He looks like a very straight shooter on the ball, etc. But um, when you start fighting over that call and uh, you you lose the most important thing to an athlete in Olympic competition, in a match like that, in wrestling, which is one word, focus. And I think that's what happened to Dake. Now, Dake's performance in the bronze medal match was interesting as he actually went against uh, Sabalov, who's a world uh, champion. I th oh, my memory. I think it's from 2014. Russian national team. Incredible wrestler. Incredibly technical. Heart of a line, etc. And uh, that match was interesting because at the very end, uh, Dake became the dake -inator. I don't know what happened. If he uh, had his, uh, I don't know, the vitamins hit or whatever, then he became the Terminator. And he did a throw of a grand amplitude. And uh, had he wrestled like that, that was Kyle Dake. I don't think there's anyone who can uh, stop Dake. I mean, the guy, if he wrestled like that, gold, no problem. I mean, in my opinion. Now, let's look at uh, Aaron Brooks at 86 kilograms. This was an interesting one, of course, because he beat David Taylor uh, to make the U.S. team, etc. And David Taylor was probably, out of all the American wrestlers, the most favored to um, take a gold, had he gone, etc. And uh, get to that status of, uh, I think he's already a legendary wrestler, but it would cement that status and perhaps maybe even the best American wrestler of all time had he gone to Olympics and took another gold. Of course, there's other guys like John Smith. You've got that Bruce, uh, my boy, Bruce Gom Baumgartner, my personal hero when I was a kid. Uh, but yeah, it's there. So uh, Aaron faced two very tough wrestlers to start, especially the Japanese wrestler uh, Ishiguro. But uh, Brooks beat him 11-1, you know, and Brooks looked, uh, looked very, very good. Now, Brooks went into the semifinal against uh, Magomed Ramazanov. Okay, now you got to understand, uh, Ramazanov is an extremely good wrestler. Uh, technically, he's sticky. The guy is top of the top. Like, people don't understand how good Ramazanov is, okay? And the reason I'm saying this is to first give Ramazanov the credit, but also to un for people to understand how good Brooks is, okay? Now, 
Brooks and Ramazan have gone to that parterre position at the very end. And it just happened that those kind of positions for anyone from uh, Dagestan or Sethia, this is where they really rock, okay? And it was one of Ramazov's strongest positions in order of solving, okay? And Ramazan used his technical, uh, Ramazanov used his technical ability, his grit and resilience uh, to score in Brooks in the final seconds of the match and a memorable win. Uh, and thus going off to the finals where we all know Ramazanov took gold against Yazdani, okay? Now, had Brooks been able to hold off Ramazanov and get to the finals, I, I really believe uh, Brooks would have given Yazdani an extremely hard match, even if Yazdani had not had an injured arm. And I think Brooks probably would have beaten uh, Yazdani. I think Brooks has it. I think the guy is a stud. Um, we'll never know. The rest is history. Now, Brooks went on to win the, uh, the bronze medal, and I personally think he did very well. And I think he needs to give himself a pat on the back and... I think Brooks has a great future and ahead of him in international wrestling. He's very talented. He's strong. And the guy's a winner. You know, he's a winner. Kyle Snyder at 97 kilograms. Now, that is my favorite division. Okay, 97, 96. But my favorite's 97. Now, this was an interesting division to match because I believe had Snyder pulled a different uh, draw, he would have had a good chance of taking um, a bronze, maybe, maybe even silver. Uh, I personally don't think he's technically at the level of the current top dogs in 97 kilograms. And it's hard for me to say that. I'm going to get a lot of heat from this, but uh, you got to listen to me on this. I'm not hating on Snyder. I personally absolutely love his wrestling style and his performances in the past. I'm a huge Snyder fan, okay? But I think the top national level programs coaches who aren't in the U.S. understand his style and have built great game plans to deal with it. And I don't believe U.S. wrestling has put enough investment into developing a better game plan and technical solution to counter, the, counter their counters. Um, Snyder is definitely the strongest physically of uh, the 97 kilogram in terms of raw strength. How did I say physically? But he is. The guy's a beast. In college, he wrestled against in a heavy division. You watch his Instagram. You watch him. The guy is physically strong, okay, as an ox, you know? Um, but in the division, the top dogs, I'm talking about Russians, Dagestanis, Ossetians, Iranians, uh, have evolved at a much higher pace technically. Uh, than he has, okay? Hurts me to say, uh, but it is what I see in the truth of the truth. Now, Kyle, you might not like what I said, but I have a feeling people aren't telling you what you need to hear and telling what you want to hear. And you may be surrounded by a lot of yes men. If I'm wrong, hey, no problem. I'm just a fat guy wearing a red hat that's not straight. I can't give you a straight, etc. But This is what I think, okay? Now, does Snyder have another Olympics in him? I think he does. And I think if he concentrates on developing new tactics, strategies, and answering from a technical point of view, you know, the, uh, the pen and not the sword, uh, to, to defeat those top dogs, I think he can give anyone, and I mean anyone, a hard day and uh, possibly take gold. I, I really believe, and I think Snyder's one to do that. Uh, now, Mason Paris, 125. I personally thought Mason had a really good chance of meddling. And unfortunately, he just had a bad match against a very good wrestler, this big Mongolian. Could uh, Mason beat the, the Mongolian? I definitely think so. I think, in, I think Mason could have gone really far uh, on the competition in a good day. I think he would have a little bit of problems with Taha. I think he could beat Taha. Depends. It's like quite even. I think Geno, this competition, it would be very hard to beat Geno. And I actually think Zare... Uh, Mason couldn't beat this competition. I think Zare had the type of wrestling and the answers to uh, Mason's um, uh, problems that uh, would enable Zare to beat him. I think Paris, um, I mean, we will never know if how he would have done. And wrestling internationally, Paris has done really well um, in the past. I'm just trying to think here. And I think in the future, I would like to see Mason Paris continue wrestling. 
internationally, I think he has a really good chance of getting a lot of golds around his neck. He's talented. He's got a lot of heart. He's the man. And uh, remember, he's young. He's 24, right? A lot of those guys aren't. They're getting older now. I think uh, now Taha Akgul is retiring. So that's a big dog that's not there anymore. I think a lot of the old, a lot of the wrestlers in that division are becoming older and there's a changing of the guard. And I think if Mason really works on technical, uh, learning technically how to deal with these other styles of wrestling internationally and tactics and studies it more, maybe he is, maybe I'm wrong. I think he's going to be uh, getting a lot of golds. I think Mason is is the man and a big Mason fan here. Now, some interesting questions are going to rise. 86 kilograms. Had David Taylor been there, what would have happened? I think David would take gold. I think no problem. I think he would have, even if Yazdani was there, I think David would have taken gold. It just happens that on that day, Brooks was the man. He won fair and square. And there it is. You know, that's a future. And now David is, of course, with Oklahoma State. And I think Oklahoma State's got a great future in wrestling due to them. Had Burroughs made 74 kilograms? Hmm. Yeah, I think he would probably take uh, silver, maybe bronze. I think he would probably have a pro uh, hard time with Jamalov. I think Jamalov has developed into a really, really good wrestler. Could Jamalov, uh, what would happen if Sidakov was there? I think Sidakov would still beat Jamalov, but it would be very close. Okay, that's just my personal opinion. Um, had Gable Stevenson made 125, good, he would have taken gold. There's no doubt. I think Gable is... Uh, He's the man. And from what I understand, he couldn't make the tryouts because the WWE was one day late in releasing from his contract. It's sad, but now we're going to see Gable in the NFL. Maybe I'll be wearing a Bills hat. I don't know. I wear hats that people buy for me and teams I don't mind, you know. So here we go. Buy me a hat, you know. Um, the U.S. has also a weird problem, okay. In the U.S., they, you guys have, I mean, the U.S. has so much talent. Okay, especially lately, the numbers in wrestling are just increasing compared to, let's say, 15, 20 years ago. Why? Because wrestling's great. There's more emphasis in it. The internet. Also, MMA might have had an emphasis on people wanting to learn wrestling. Um, but there's a lot of talent. And I think choosing the right wrestlers to face international uh, competition is very hard. Because sometimes when you choose a wrestler for a team, he he might be much better to face international competition than wrestling for the position within the U.S. Uh, trials, okay? And because of that, uh, you're going to have a lot of issues. Now, a good um, example of this is Brandon Slay, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Probably not uh, Saitiev's favorite wrestler. Saitiev is my favorite wrestler of all time. But Brandon Slay, amazing wrestler. I'm sure amazing coach. Love the guy. But when he was competing... I don't know if he would be the first pick for people for the U.S. team. But his style was the kryptonite for uh, Saitiev then. Um, I was in shock when I saw that match. I was a youngster, you know. But it was. Now, he took silver medal. Of course, Leopold uh, got caught for uh, steroids. Thus, um, uh, I mean, Brandon took the silver medal. Thus, Brandon deservingly got the gold. And uh, the rest is there. So... That just t tells you that I think one of the big problems is so much talent and they need to really understand how to pick the right guys for the international uh, scene and freestyle. Because, of course, they they um, they train folk style in the U.S. You guys know that. It's a great style. How do I think folk style, um, does it impact uh, them internationally? I think a bit, yeah. But I also think folk style has a lot of attributes that uh, can help if they know how to transfer it into freestyle. You know, a lot of these international guys also do Greco all like many, many days of the week and they bring it into the throws. Um, my two cents. So how do I think the U.S. freestyle team did this Olympics? I think they did well. I think, yeah, there were no golds. Happens. Um, first time in 56 years. Okay, but they had 56 years where they had golds. Doesn't mean the U.S. is, a lot of people are saying, oh, the U.S. is, no, the U.S. isn't over. They will still want to be one of the big three. The big three being Russia, U.S., Iran, and it can be either or anyways. I have my thoughts on who the number one is, but it doesn't matter. Um, the next Olympics are in the U.S. And uh, I can tell you one thing. Team USA is going to come with fire in their eyes and their souls and ready to smash. Uh, if you like this video, 
please like and subscribe. If you don't like what I have said, no problem. Leave it in the comments. Maybe I'm wrong. And if you like what I said, hey, leave me a comment as well. Uh, until then, let's enjoy the wrestling. And for more grappling content, etc., let's do it. And uh, grab, throw, and tap. Grapplezilla. Thank you very much for watching this. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.